Hey guys, it's Sunday. I got some church clap going on. How you doing on a Sunday morning? Oh yeah, come on. Good morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching. Good to see ya. It's Miss Val. I'm excited for a new month. And it's a party, which is why we got the music rocking. I might get distracted, so I'm gonna try it down. This month, we are kicking off a new series, and it is talking all about friendship. I love friendship. Friendships are like one of the best parts of life, I gotta say. And it says, uh, our theme says, using your words and actions to show others that you care. I love this because it's a two-parter. It's not just your words. You're my friends. Hi. Let's hang out. That's great. High five for being inclusive and wanting to hang out. But friendship is more than that. It's using your words and your actions. So that means being a good friend isn't just about what you're saying. It is about who you are being. How are you acting it out? How are you loving people? Come on, somebody. Now, got to have a fun little game to get started. So I have got some dynamic duos that you guys should know. All right. So you're going to drop it in the comment if you know who this partnership, this friendship, this amigos, this freundins and freunds, if you're German speaking, right? Learn something new today, right? Freund, there you go. Uh, we're gonna look at some different people. We're gonna see if you know your friends. So here we go. Here's our first one. Ooh, can you see it? Ooh. Do we know who that is? Come on, it's Groot, or I said Gru. <laughs> Groot and Rocket. No, I mean, it's kind of an easy friendship because Groot just says, I am Groot. That's pretty easy to communicate with someone who has very basic communication skills, right? Rocket and Groot. I don't know if you've seen those in the movies, but those are pretty fun. They're really good friends. They are there for each other. Groot. He wrapped his arms around all of his friends and created a shield to protect them, even though it turned him into a tiny little twig and he had to go through being a teenager all over again. That's friendship. All right, here's our next one. Uh, this is like an older one. I feel like it made a little bit of a comeback, so maybe you guys will know it. I'm not sure. What do you think? Do you know who this is? Burp, burp, burp. Come on, who is it? Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Such good friends. It kept trying to show me pictures of Charlie Brown and Lucy, and I'm like, that girl always pulls the ball up and makes him fall on his butt. That's not friendship. That doesn't show it in its action, right? But look at that, love. Charlie Brown and Snoopy. His hair, just like one hair coming out of his forehead. Poor guy. All right, here's our next one. Everybody should know this one. Who are these peeps? Who is it, who is it? They have a whole song about them. You got a friend in me. Oh, you got a friend in me. I'm going to stop singing for you because, you know, that's an action that I'm showing that I'm your friend. I'm going to not torture you anymore with my singing. It's Woody and Buzz. Come on. We love those guys. I mean, they didn't start out as friends, but they got there, took a little time, but they made their way there, and that's all that matters. See, friendships aren't always perfect. They don't always start out. Great. Sometimes you have to work it a little bit. Maybe you don't like each other at first. I've had friendships like that where I'm like, who is this person? I don't know that I like them. And then you spend some time, you're like, actually, you're pretty awesome. What was I thinking? I'm a dummy. Be like them. All right, here's our next one. You guys are doing great. Okay. I, I didn't want to do this one, but I know you all like these people. We're going to skip through it quickly. Everybody knows it's Elsa and Anna. Yes, they are both sisters and friends. Again, not always that close because Anna was really annoying. Like really annoying. Do you want to go build a snowman? No, leave me alone. Who wants to go out in the snow? It's cold. Blah. As I said, we're going to skip by. Skipping. I, I, I can't explain it, guys. I don't know why I don't like them, but I just, I don't like it. Oh, here is, this might be tough for you guys. Some of you guys may not know who this is. And you know what? I don't judge you because I don't care for these movies either. But 
Some of you guys are gonna know, you're gonna like it. And so this is for all of you. I'm gonna just call you nerds because I mean that in a very flattering way. Star Wars nerds. Ooh, I just forgot his name. Chewbacca? And, mm, you know, that guy is, I'm gonna remember here in a second. Han! Not Hans, we did learn that. It's not Han Solo. Han Solo, see, I got it, it just took me a minute. I even looked and wrote it down and I don't know where I put that paper. <laughs> they were buddies. Again, Chewbacca just kind of like makes weird noises. I can't do it, I would try it, but I really can't do it. Uh, he just makes kind of strange noises, but they somehow communicate, they, they, they have a good friendship. All right, let's see. This is another really old one. I don't know if you guys will know this one. Did you watch Sesame Street? Did you guys watch Sesame Street? Uh, yeah, these are two really cool guys. They're friends. Sometimes they don't like each other. They have moments. They kind of, you know, they bicker, but they come back together. They bring it around. They, their friendship comes around. It takes a hot minute sometimes. It's Bert and Ernie. Oh, Sesame Street. Oh, we need some Snuffleupagus and Big Bird in here. Be a party. All right, let's see who we have. Yes. I love, the, I love these guys. I mean, these are maybe my favorites. Anybody who is part of our Kid Connect this summer, when Pastor Caleb was on, he would always be hanging out with these guys, you know, in the scare room. Mike and Sully. That's right. They're great friends. They're there for each other. They're working it out. I love it. Such good movies. I love it. Monsters. Ooh, this is another old one. This is another really old one. This is like a classic. This is like a classic. Again, I had to look up the names because it's been a hot minute since I watched this movie, but then it came right back to me. And I'm like, yes, they were friends. Well, they used to be like real people and then they got enchanted and turned into a clock and a candlestick thingy. It's Lumineer and Cogsworth. Buddies, they, I mean, they stuck out some hard times together. Things got weird in their lives. I mean, they were humans. They were like chilling at a house, serving people, doing stuff together, watching a movie. All, boom! Next thing you know, they're a clock and a candle. What are you going to do? They figured it out. They just were for, there for each other no matter what. I love that about them. All right. So we are going to be talking about friendship. And here we go. We're gonna talk about a friendship checklist. Now, if you have your Bibles, Bible, you're gonna open it up to the book of Ecclesiastes. Weird word, I know, I know. I feel like I'm the only one who can hear that and it's annoying me, so I'm gonna turn it off. Ecclesiastes, and we're gonna be in chapter five. Now, if you're looking for Ecclesiastes, you're gonna to go to the very middle of your Bible. Like if you open your Bible to the dead center, you're gonna end up in Psalms, okay? And then you're just gonna keep flipping the pages right to left um, through Proverbs, it's right after Proverbs, and then you are gonna kick into this lovely book called Ecclesiastes. It's kind of tiny, it's easy to miss it. If you get to Song of, so uh, Song of Songs, stop, drop, roll it back. And even that one's kind of short. If you get to Isaiah, stop, drop, roll it back. Here we go. Ecclesiastes. We are going to be, uh, nope, just kidding. In verse four. I looked at the wrong number. Verse four. Okay. Verse four. And we are going to be starting, uh, in verse nine. So chapter four, verse nine. I'm just saying it wrong altogether. And here is the first part. It says this, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. Boom, right? That's great. We want to get more done. We want to be productive. We want to do stuff that's hard. And you know what makes it easier? Friends. When you have someone to come alongside you, to lend a hand, to bring you um, just extra like thoughts and ideas and extra muscle sometimes because maybe something's heavy. It's like a big project. You're like, I need help. I literally can't get it. I have those moments sometimes and it's just like, I need a friend. Where's my friend? <gasps> right? You need someone because you can be more productive. You can get more things done when you're working together. I love that. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Now we're going to bump down to the next verse 10. So if you kept reading, you're ahead of the game. Don't, worry, don't read more. Just stop when I stop. You ready? Um, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. Checklist number two, friends help each other. Listen, maybe you are playing a video game and you're in a really tricky level. Maybe it's Candy Crush. I don't know. Maybe you're playing Sneezies. Do you guys remember that game? I used to love Sneezies. Whatever it is, maybe you're, um, you know, on Super Mario and you're like, I need a friend so that I can bubble and get past the scary guy that I keep dying at and they can help me. That's how we roll in my family. You get scared, you go in your bubble, wiggle your way to me. I'll get you through the scary stuff. Friends help each other out. And that is a big part of friendship for you guys to remember too. Now, um, this is just a note. Ecclesiastes is a book that is written by a fella named Solomon. Now Solomon, I don't know if you guys remember this, it's like bonus round information, okay? Solomon is known as the wisest man to ever live. Ever. Present day included. The wisest person ever. And you know why he was wise? Because when God said to him, Solomon, I will grant you anything that you ask. He did not make a foolish decision and ask for a never ending supply of ice cream and sprinkles and cherries and the whipped cream. He didn't ask for that. I may have made, I may have asked for that. Maybe like brownies along with the sun. You know, I feel like I want ice cream now. Sorry, sidetracked, here we go. It's morning, I can't eat ice cream right now. It's fine, here we go. But Solomon said, I would like wisdom. So this is some of his wisdom. This is some of what he wrote down. This is some good stuff. And that's why we know we can trust it because wisest man ever. Boom, drop the mic. Even if you couldn't like, you know, we already know we can believe it because it's the Bible, right? We know that. it's by, The Bible is God's word. It is truth. It is alive. It is breathing. I mean, I can't hear it breathing, but it's, it's the living word of God. And even if we doubted that, this is now a part of the Bible that is written by the smartest person, the wisest person ever. Trust it. It's like fact checking, like ch ch dad facts are just living in this right here. All right. Friends help each other. Uh, I believe now we are jumping to uh, 12, verse 12. Yeah, we are. Jump, jump. Um, we're jumping to verse 12 and it says this, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. I love that. Friends stand up for each other. Now I didn't have for each other because honestly it didn't fit on my screen without it being a different size. And I didn't like that. So I figured we know what we're talking about here. Friends stand up. They stand up to the bullies. They stand up when things get hard. They stand up and they defend their friends. They stand up and they show up for their friends. That is part of what a friend does. And when you do that, you conquer things. You get over stuff. You become more successful at what you're doing. You're able to, man, just do amazing things. And that is awesome, which I, again, love. Man, Solomon, you are, you're killing it today, bro good okay and then we're just popping down this is the last one last verse and we are popping down my nose is itchy okay um here, here here's the thing um it says here this is like a, a little extra um uh for a triple braided cord is not easily broken so right here i have got Ooh, hello oh is it too close I have got some cord. I feel like it's just getting blurry. And this cord has, funnily enough, three cords. Okay, so here's the thing. I am pulling on it really hard and it doesn't break. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna untwizzle this a little bit. Untwizzle. Now we got a single strand. You see my single strand? Boop, and watch. 
Oh, okay. It's still pretty strong. I still can't, I still can't break it. I'm going to pull it, right? I'm going to pull it. And when it's a single strand, I can break it. <coughs> it's dusty or something. There's little strands coming. When it's a single strand, it's easily broken. I just ripped that thing apart. It, it took a little bit. It took some effort. We can be strong people, guys. You can be pretty tough. But it says that when you twine together, that it's not easily broken. Now, this is the one that I like the most, okay? Because we're talking about friendships, so it's you. It's your friend or friends, right? So that is two parts of the, of the twining. But there's an extra one in there. And this is a... I, I love this. Look at this. Friends trust God together. Really strong and amazing friendships happen when you guys stand on the same foundation. If you are believing the same thing, if you are trusting God together, you are putting like a steel thread in the midst of your little friendship. It means that you're going to be kinder, hopefully. You are going to express love better. You are going to genuinely do your best to care for that person and to put them first and to treat them the way that they that you want to be treated. Um, you're going to do all the things that you learn about from God that he wants us to do. And so it's going to make your friendship so much stronger because you're both in the same boat. You're both bringing the same thing to the table. And that makes it such a strong, strong and amazing thing. Here's the bottom line, guys. Choose your friends carefully. I'm going to say that again because some of you really need to hear this. Choose your friends carefully. Pastor Sam says this all the time. I feel like he maybe got it from someone else. I don't remember who that is at this moment, but I know he says this often. He says, show me your friends and I will show you your future. I will show you what it is that you're going to accomplish in your life. Friendships are so important. And so when you make a bad choice, when you link yourself with someone who is not that kind, right? Who isn't that helpful and doesn't lift you up, right? When you, when you link yourself with someone who doesn't believe the same things that you believe, you can get in trouble because often you'll kind of go down maybe some bad roads that you shouldn't. But when you choose friends that build you up, they lift you up, and they encourage you to be the very best that you can be, I'm telling you, it's amazing what God can do in your life. It's amazing what he can accomplish through you and through your friendships. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. So I think today a really good thing for you to do as you're kind of thinking about this lesson, and maybe you're not going to think about it that long, and that's okay. It's all right if you're not like all day pondering what I'm talking about. That's fine. You may not even know what pondering is. That's okay. It just means to think about it. You may not be like, oh man, I'm just going to really process this, and maybe I'll just sit and you're not going to probably do that. That's totally fine. Maybe you will. All my thinkers out there, you're going to be just thinking about it. But I do want you to take a little bit of time and think about who your closest friends are and ask yourself, man, are they people who help me when I have, when I have trouble? Are they people who stand up for me when someone is making fun of me or they're not being nice to me? Do they stand with me when I need to fight? Oh, I, I got some of that dust in my eye. Man, are they friends who trust God with me? I'm telling you. Think about who your friends are, and if the answer to those are maybe not so much, maybe you need to think about that friendship a little bit. Maybe you need to pray about it. Maybe you need to invite them to church. Hey, we're all about inviting people to come along. You know church is fun. You know it's a party. Invite them to come along with you. Say, hey, come to church with me, especially the month of September. We're going to be having ice cream and ice pops and icy things every single week as you're leaving. We're encouraging you to bring someone along to enjoy it with you. We're going to have lots of fun stuff that's going to be happening this month. So show up, bring someone so that they can start learning some of this stuff with you. And then you can be that really good cord. I should have had one that I didn't break apart, right? That is strong and amazing. Okay, it's that time, um, and it's the first of the month. This is the very first week that we are learning about our memory verse. And so it's an easy one this month. 
Um, two months in a row, we have done the memory verse challenge so that we have to eat cow tongue and y'all have not done it. It got close the month before this last month. Wasn't that close at all. Um, I think we were like eight kids away. So I think we're gonna take cow tongue off the table for a month or two. Maybe we'll bring it back for the end of the year and we'll bring it back for something else, maybe offering at the end of the year, or I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll think of something. The cow tongue will return. It's still chilling in the freezer. I mean, literally. Um, but this is a new month. We will have a special treat at the end of the month. Um, if you know your memory verse, you come on that fourth Sunday. Um, if you guys are not comfortable coming to church yet, you're not kind of processing and you're not coming in here and this is how you're tuning in. If you shoot me a video, you post it up online, we will make sure that you get a little something um, sent to you or dropped off at your house because we want to know what you guys are up to as well. But here it is. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Word. I love that. A friend loves at all times. All the time. They are there to help when trouble comes. That's Proverbs 17, 17. Boom. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I literally love this. So start working on it. Start memorizing it. Get ready. It's going to be a great month. And, uh, I'm excited. There's going to be a lot of fun things. So get ready, get tuned in, and uh, you guys have a great rest of your week. I'm going to pray real quick before we go. And uh, so if you want to join me, we're going to clap it out. You know, you know, you know what to do. On, on the one, two, three, we're going to bring it together. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to clap at home? Are your hands open? Are they warmed up? Here we go. One, two, three. Father, I thank you for these amazing students, God. I thank you that you are teaching them about how to be a good friend, Father, about how to have good relationships in their lives, people that build them up and love them well and fight for them, Father, and stand up for them. And so we just thank you, God, that you would help open their eyes, that you would help open doors to good friendships, and that those friendships would take them to amazing, amazing places. We love you so much, and we are so thankful um, for the model that you give us in your word. And uh, we just pray that this will be a wonderful week as kids are going back to school, whatever it looks like. God, be with them. Keep them safe. Keep them sane. Let them have fun. Let them enjoy their time with their new friends or whatever it is that they're doing. And uh, we just thank you so much. In your name, we pray. Amen. Well, that's it, kids. I will catch you on the flip side. That, that means next week. Bye!